This is a regular Jurassic World Park, and this is my Jurassic World Park. I had a problem which needed an engineering solution. Most parks have multiple enclosures because herbivores and carnivores generally don't get along. But could I engineer the perfect park with only one enclosure of dinosaurs? To answer this question, I grabbed my engineering notebook and started off with some research. Engineers in real life face many types of constraints. Similar to how this challenge involves size constraints, there are financial constraints, material constraints, and time constraints, just to name a few. Some examples of size constraints in real life engineering are civil engineers planning cities, automotive engineers building race cars like the formula car I built this past year, and computer engineers designing new microchips. For our specific problem, the key component is the enclosure, and we have three different types to choose from. We have the land enclosure, we have the aviaries, and then we have the lagoons. For lagoons, it's impossible for the dinosaurs to break out, so you never have to worry about them eating civilians during storms. That's why we're going to start with this majestic lagoon for our first attempt. Anytime an engineer is looking to design something with insane size restrictions, the first step is planning, specifically design and analysis. There's a few key components that we need, a response facility and a paleomedical facility for the dinosaur enclosure. These are going to keep the dinosaurs healthy and contained. We're going to need our lagoon sections, we're also going to need some viewing galleries, and then we're going to need stuff for the guests like amenities, hotels, restrooms, shelters, and perhaps some transport depending on how big our enclosure gets. I think a good plan is to have the arrival point close to the edge of the map and then build the lagoon in the center with all of the key guest components all around it. The engineering method is essential to any engineer. The first of the four main engineering method sections is the planning section, and this involves design and analysis. The second part of the engineering method is the part where you actually build your system, and this involves procurement, logistics, and assembly. The third part of the engineering method is the performance checking method, and this involves performance and sustainability. The last, and possibly most crucial part which is most overlooked out of all of them, is the death and recycling. Throughout this video we will be using this exact method to engineer a park with only one enclosure. The procurement phase is pretty easy, we just go over to this hot bar and grab whatever items we want to grab. <laughs> the logistics is the same way, it just comes right to us, we don't have to go find it and source it or anything. The assembly is where the trick comes in, because we need to make sure that we're building a park that's sustainable, that it can bring in money as we're using money to build the rest of it, and that guests can actually use it well. We finished the procurement, logistics, and assembly of the backbone of the system. Now we have the performance and sustainability. And in order to do that, we need to talk about exactly what we're trying to do with this park. In order for us to beat this challenge and create a perfect park, there are four main components which we need to have accomplished. We need to have five starts. We also need to be able to have 100% appeal. We need to be at 100% guest satisfaction. And finally, we need to be at 100% amenity coverage. The first thing we really want to target is the appeal. Now, in order to do this, we're going to probably need to expand this lagoon because who knows, we might have some other dinosaurs. I'm thinking about making three main lagoon sections. One here for the ichthyosaurus, one here and one here. Of course, they all have to be connected and then we'll see how much appeal we can actually get. So now that I think about it, and this is a bit of the performance aspect, we're probably going to want to bring in some more income before we start work on the lagoon. So let's look at our amenity coverage. The main areas that need it are right here by the main center and right here by the viewer. We are now at 100% amenity coverage and we're on to moving to accommodation, shelter, restroom, and transport. Now in order to do accommodation, it's pretty simple, we just need the hotels. Alright, the guests now have 94% comfort. They still need some more hotels, so we're just going to pop one more and right to the left over here. We have made quite a bit of progress. We have a fully functioning park with transportation, restrooms, shelters, and hotels. Hopefully, nothing will go wrong now, and we just have to work on expanding the dinosaurs, which, in the past, has proven to be a big problem. Unfortunately, the ichthyosaurus seem to be kind of invading all of the other space, so hopefully it won't cause too many problems. Alright, and here we're going to do some of these Attenborosaurus and Elasmosaurus, because they work well together. 
Now over here we're going to be doing a couple of chronosaurs and whatever this dude is that looks like a crocodile. Just don't ask me to pronounce these dinosaur names, they're too complicated for me. No, no, really please don't ask. Alright, you guys really want me to try Lyoplur... Ly... Lyoplurodon. Ly... You... No, never mind. I think we're gonna put a gym. We need to have some gym bros coming to this park. Oh, these guys look so cool. They look kind of scary, honestly. Who are you fighting? Did you lose or did you win? He won. Elasmosaurus 2, we're gonna rename you. You are now Ella, because that's close to Elasmosaurus. Oh, there's five of these boys. They look like they're ready to go. They kind of look like the Loch, Ness, the, the Loch Ness Monster. Oh, it looks like there's a, it looks like there's a storm. And on top of that, we have, we, we have one of these dudes is sick. What is going on? This could torpedo the whole entire park if we're not careful. This reminds me of another storm that I had. Let's see what our fuel's at currently. 81%, that is really good. It looks like we're gonna be able to meet it as soon as, as soon as we release these Chronosaur. No, not Chronosaur. Liu Plur, Liu Wep, oh no. Oh no. Chronic stress, unmet needs. He's got chronic stress too. What is this? Cohabitation, too many dinosaurs. We are not going to be able to complete this park because this is not sustainable. These dinosaurs are gonna die. We're gonna have to go back to the drawing board and try something else. In terms of enclosures, the main component of the park, we tried the lagoon and it turned out to be unsuccessful because of prohibition limits of the dinosaurs. So now we move on to the aviary. There are quite a few more types of these dinosaurs and if put together correctly, I suspect that we might be able to overcome the cohibition limit, but only time will tell. For the aviary enclosure, we're here in the Grand Mountains of Yosemite, and the first few steps of the engineering method are going to be roughly the same. got back to where we were before we have a hotel we have some amenities and we have all of these dinosaurs along with the monorail track unfortunately we've been having some difficulties with these stupid ranger teams going to this aviary dome look at this dude it says he's visiting aviary one do you see this guy moving at all you're gonna you're gonna go visit it wow these guys are slow what is going on all right now you sir should be able to go over here really easily it's a straight path all your needs one place right here I'm so fed up with this. I have no clue what's going on. Why can't you reach your destination? Has this dude just not moved at all? I'm convinced that rangers in this game are just broken. Look, he's not even doing anything. This is supposed to be automatically checking all of this, and that's the main reason that we went with an aviary, and not with one of the other land enclosures that could house a lot of herbivores and carnivores, and look, these need to be checked again, and he's not even doing anything about this. Anyways, we got back to where we were. We're already at 43% appeal. We have to do the performance and the sustainability checks for the engineering method. Unfortunately, this dinosaur is almost at its cohibition, <coughs> not cohibition, cohabitation limit. So we're not gonna be able to put any more pterodons into this enclosure. We can put this guy and we can put this g g geo, geoster, geostenberg. You know what? They don't pay engineers to know how to pronounce words. They pay them to build things. I don't need to know how to do this. We get to release this guy and hope that uh, everything goes okay. You're still doing okay. You are also still doing okay. Okay, this is good. This is good. All right, our appeal is up to 50%, which unfortunately means I think that we're going to have to do a whole nother side to this whole pterodon enclosure.
Now we can start synthesizing dinosaurs on this half. Unfortunately, there are very few of these flying reptiles that really like other flying reptiles, so the coefficient is going to go way up way fast. Alright, and these are both ready for release. Alright, we're almost at 5 stars, but we still need to get our appeal up quite a bit. Ooh, we could do one more enclosure in the middle. That could be cool. It is time to choose the final type of dinosaur that we are going to be using, and it's going to be this guy. The Marodactylus. Our appeal is almost perfect. Our guest comfort is almost perfect, or, and our amenity coverage is very high. If anything's gonna go wrong in a Jurassic movie, it would be now. Oh no. What the heck? One of them already broke out. Oh, they're, they're all fighting. They're all dying. Oh, you've killed three people already. Oh man, and there's a storm coming. Oh, we have no power. All of the enclosures are going down. I guess this is how it ends. But fortunately, this wasn't my park. There's a weird smell in my room, and I don't know whether to be concerned or just let it be. What? No! No! Don't you freaking dare. Pause. Capture team. Add task. You, sir. You get put down. No. No. You're not allowed to eat anyone. You are not allowed to mother freaking eat anyone. Get him. Oh, he's done. Release. Release. Ladies and gentlemen, with the release of those dinosaurs, we have 101 appeal. We have 100% guest comfort on all of the categories, five stars, and 100% amenity coverage. It is my honor to present to you the one enclosure perfect park. And there are no issues whatsoever. It is absolutely 100% reliable. And I also know how to pronounce every single dinosaur name. But what would happen if we used a single enclosure to house the humans instead of the dinosaurs? Such a lovely day in this park, walking around, looking at my one giant enclosure. What's going on? What the heck? Oh my good- 